frustrations with tone. Okay, let's get our, wrap our head around that. This is something we all deal with, especially electric guitar players. And the first frustration that we'll talk about when, as dealing with tone is not knowing what it is that you want out of your tone or not actually knowing what you need to get that tone. Uh, does this sound familiar? You just know that how you sound isn't the way that you want to sound. And where do you start? That's a huge frustration. So many people deal with that. It's, it's, um, and this is another place where YouTube may not help you as much as you think it might. This is where YouTube gear reviews can put you kind of in the ditch the same way as, as just blindly going in there for learning guitar. So, um, it's a big topic. Guitar tone's a big topic. And there's lots of moving parts and there's lots of things that, that affect each other. So it's not a cut and dry situation and it's not an easy one to experiment with. And it doesn't, it, it can take a very, very, very long time to figure out exactly what you want to sound like and then knowing how to get there. Um, so you need some help with this at first. Uh, and to, to find that starting point, where do we start? Where should I begin on my purchasing? Where should I begin on seeing what it is that I want to do? Uh, if the, the problem that a lot of people have is something I had to, when I started off, when, I just started buying gear. I just started looking at advertisements and reviews and I think that's what a lot of us do. And it put me on the path of a lot of frustration. And it was for a very long time. Uh, I bought things that I thought would work. And from what I saw and from when I, I actually had seen players who play these, this, these pieces of gear, who made them sound fantastic. And then when I got them, I didn't know how to make that gear sound fantastic. It wasn't something I could just plug in, turn it on, and it sounded great. And then the frustration starts to escalate. And you wonder, well, what is it? Is it me? Um, is it something that I'm doing? Did I get a defective unit? How come I don't sound, you know, that way? And it starts to amplify. And then the more you work with this gear, because it should work, right? It should make you sound, you spent money on it. It should make you sound fantastic. And you go on YouTube, you find the uh, gear of the day, the, the really cool thing with tons of features. And we're going to talk about features in a minute. Uh, and you don't sound anything like that player. Uh, so your frustration ramps up and ramps up and ramps up over time. Not a good place to start. Not a good place to get the newest thing that's, that has come out. It rarely works well. The, a better way to think about this is to start with the classic basic gear. Uh, and here's the point of whatever the style of music that you want to play, that you want to sound like. Uh, it won't help if you love metal and then you buy a Fender amp. It's not going to help. Um, it, they're, they're, they're two different things. Um, you're going to spend most of your trying, most of your time, um, trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole. You know, you're going to be trying to to do things to make that gear you have, that amplifier you have, work, to and to do something that it wasn't designed for. The most up to date amp. We're going to talk about this. The most up to date amp and and the guitars that have lots of features is not what you need at first because you don't know if the way that you play are going to benefit from those features that you get all these extra bells and whistles from those things uh, i've learned that over the years the more features that, that i have in gear the farther away i get and the longer it takes for me to get what i need out of that gear so now I don't look for that at all. If I see something that has too much stuff, too many neat things, 
um, I, I, I shy away from that at first. What we want to do is we want to get the, the basics of your style. And for electric guitars, the, and that's mainly what I'm talking about today is amp, guitar, some pedals, strings, and picks. And we want to make that work for you in a, in a, in a classic uh, tube amp kind of avenue there because that's what all these modeling things are trying to sound like in the first place. And if you could get to that in the beginning and get the right sounds ahead of time, you're in good shape. Then you can experiment on top of a good tone. Uh, let's see, why do you th see so many advanced players using what could be called ancient gear? Gear that was developed in the 1950s. Why do you see that? Why hasn't that stuff just been left like this? This is not new. <laughs> okay. This is an old, old, old design. But why do you see that? Why do you see so many advanced players using ancient gear? Uh, because they work and because they give you the, the basic tones that are going to push you in the right direction. So where you, when you start adding on newer things and newer features and different sounds, you're, you're um, accentuating what's good instead of hiding things. So you're gonna experiment on, on a core sound. And once you have that, once you have your foundation, everything else is cake. Everything else is fun to be putting on top of your great tone. You're not trying to cover up problems of your basic tone. Um, how about this? Knowing what you want, but you don't know how to get it. That's a big frustration on gear too. Randomly buying guitars and amps to experiment with. It, it can be a very, very long process. It can be decades before you settle on your sound. Just by buying something, trying it for a while, it, 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 it's, 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 it can be exhausting. How do I know? Done it. Um, it can be decades and we need to speed up this process. How can we get this, get a good, solid tone? And then we can focus on playing. We can focus on really getting good on the guitar. So the number one thing is make a habit of talking to people. Make a habit of asking players, players who sound the way you do, their opinions on gear. What do they know? What have they found in their journey? How many, how many uh, years can they take off of your process with a few sentences? It, it's very, very valuable. And it's something that's... It's, it's not something to be shy about. It's something that, that if you were going to be bold about anything in playing guitar, that would be the thing to be bold about, is to be able to uh, make sure that you uh, let people know that you're interested in their sound. That's usually the first step. Say something nice. You know, <laughs> make them feel good because people spend a lot of time and a lot of money sounding the way that they'd like to sound. And if you find someone who, who you think kind of is on the same wavelength as you, be bold. Go up to them, ask them, say, hey, sometime, even if it's like at a show, sometime could, could um, here's my number. Could you, could we talk about gear sometime or something like that? So that's the first thing. Make a habit out of asking players. Uh, the next is to try everything before you buy. Borrow everything if you can, but get as much knowledge as you can before you purchase. Get, it doesn't matter what it is. Guitars, amps, pedals, strings, picks. It doesn't matter. Make sure that you have as much information as you can before you make those purchases because big purchases and guitar purchases too, even if it's not a big purchase, if, it's, if, it's, if you have it, we have this kind of collecting, um, 
uh, collecting mentality as guitar players. We like to have a lot of different stuff that we can try over time. Sometimes that stuff is not, it's not to your benefit. It's a time waster. And um, we'd like to spend our time getting better on the guitar. Uh, but if you rush into a purchase before you understand how these things work, you're making a disservice. Okay, so the, the other part of gear that can be um, very frustrating and something that I see a lot of people asking me about how to get past this and how, or they actually don't ask that, they just say, I'm this way, I don't know what to do, is never being satisfied with their sound, with their tone. Sound familiar? You're in it. If, you, if that sounds familiar, you are in it. Uh, you're either returning equipment left and right, or you're, uh, you know, buying and returning, buying, returning, or you're collecting, you have a whole bunch of half useful things, things that are, are kind of good, right? Um, and, and that can be financially, that can be very stressful. We're going to talk about the finances about that in a minute. Um, you're investing, you're investing in equipment that will most likely not go up in value. Some, some does, but most likely it won't, but that stuff's yours <laughs> and you've spent money on it. And, um, I, I did this, I did a big purge. I, I um, a few years ago, a, a few moves, uh, we were moving out of a house to a whole other area and I had a lot of stuff and I, I just said, I can't carry this stuff to another house. I don't use it. I'm never going to use it. I just like to look at it. And if I just like to look at it, I made the decision. I got to get it. I sold a lot of, lot of stuff. Uh, and now have you seen, if you paid attention, um, I don't come in with a whole lot of different guitars and different amps and things. I, I've, I've found ones that work for me. Um, although I'd like to, but it just hasn't been, uh, worth it to me. Um, because I've done that. I've, I've, I've done my experimenting. Um, uh, the other part is juggling returns and payments, you know, buying something, trying out for a while, you don't like it. Okay. Then you got to return it or sell it. And that is very time consuming. It's, it can be, it's very stressful. It's something I don't like to do. That's why I would collect things because I'd rather just let it sit there and earn and, and build some more money before I could do that. So, um, and that time that you're spending on that, on, on the great gear experiment, it never pays off in the long run. You're on a hamster wheel, you know, you need to change your thinking from being a collector to a player. And it doesn't take much. If you think about it, to be a player, you need a guitar, you need an amp and a few pedals and a tuner. Most of them, <laughs> right? And if, if these things that you have are proven classic gear, you're not taking a chance. You know that these things are going to work because they've worked for a lot of other players. Uh, you're in business. And then that time that you have to spend on music is going to be that. It's going to be spent on music. And when you're comfortable and you're confident with the tone that you have, then any experimenting you do will most likely just enhance what you've worked on before. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I've got a free gift for you. If you're new to the guitar and you're having a hard time getting your chords to sound clean, you're frustrated about that, head on over to playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord guide. I've got a free guide for you that helps you make all the small adjustments that you need to make sure your chords come out clean and clear every time. Thanks again for watching and make sure you like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon to make sure that you get notified as soon as my new videos come out. See you in the next video.